This is Paul Tudor Jones, billionaire investor. He's famous for predicting the stock market crash of 1987, also known as Black Monday. He is the ultimate financial insider. In January of 2020, he was at the World Economic Forum's Davos meeting being interviewed by CNBC. And what was interesting is how much he knew and how little the mainstream media knew about something called the coronavirus. I would say we've got a curveball with uh, this coronavirus. I think that's a big deal. Uh, well, I hope not. If you just look at the escalation of the reported cases, uh, it, it feels a lot like that. Wait, it's an old happen. virus. We, we, do we, we know a lot about this virus, I think. I, I would think we'd be able to develop something pretty quickly. There's, this. There's, there's no antidote. There's no vaccination. You can't do it. There's no it's cure. Different. We don't even know what the incubation period is. So are you seeing like through that. this or not? Right. I mean, on, on a morning like today, when David Tepper right, on I'm Friday... I'm a trader, not an investor. Correct. So if I was an investor, I'd, I'd be really nervous. Uh, if from a training standpoint, you, there's zero way I'd want to be long. It obviously sounds like he had been briefed on the dangers of the coronavirus by experts, maybe even in China. And he had intel that the mainstream media wasn't privy to. So the question becomes, how did he know this? How did he have this insider information? Well, actually, before we get to that, Let's go through what trades he would have made or what investments he most likely would have made if he knew what we now know about the coronavirus, that he knew this possibly in 2019. What financial insiders like Paul Tudor Jones do when they see a crisis coming is they're going to buy treasuries, specifically 10-year and 30-year treasuries. Why? Well, most of you know from watching my videos, but it's worth mentioning, there's an inverse relationship between the price and the interest rate. So if the interest rate on a 10-year treasury goes down, that means the price of that bond is going up. So the more demand that you have, the higher the price goes, the higher the price goes, the lower the interest rate goes. Okay, got it. We're all on the same page. So now let's look at an inverted yield curve. So let's assume the Fed has interest rates at 5%. That's the overnight rate that the Fed sets. It's called Fed funds. Okay, great. Well, the Paul Tudor Jones types knows that there's going to be a potential crisis in the future going back to 2019. Let's assume that he has that intel telling him what will likely happen in 2020. So they're going to buy all these 10-year treasuries, which drives down the yield. Remember, it increases the demand, increases price, so yield comes down. And that's when you get this inversion represented by this red line. Well, this is highly unusual. In a healthy economy, what you would see is the opposite. The curve would be steep, meaning that the interest rates at the front end of the curve, let's say the three-month, would be lower than they are at the long end of the curve, let's say 10-year, at 5%. But let's not forget, if we get that crisis situation, like the coronavirus or the GFC, what is Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve going to do? Well, they're going to take interest rates from 5%, likely down to 0%. Okay, well, if they do that, then the yield on the 10-year or the 30-year Treasury is likely going to come down as well. Well, let's think this through from the standpoint of Paul Tudor Jones. Let's say that he has $100 million that he wants to put to work, or let's just say he wants to hedge his bets based on the intel that he's getting from the scientists at the Wuhan lab, or he's going to go out and buy the 30-year treasuries, and right now, let's say they're trading at 4%. If they go down to 3%, just using those numbers as an example, that means that he has a 20% capital gain on those treasuries along with being paid 4% while he sits and waits for this crisis situation to play out. But this isn't the only reason the global elite, the banksters, the financial insiders would choose to buy treasuries. Let's think through what Paul Tudor Jones's options are with the $100 million that he most likely has right now sitting on the balance sheet of a commercial bank. Well, we know from March of 2023, and even recently, that banks in the United States can go bust. <laughs> so let's say that Paul Tudor Jones has his $100 million at Bust Bank. Well, that's his asset, but it's Bust Bank's liability. 
So if they go out of business, poof, the $100 million is gone. It's a complete loss. But if the financial insider takes the $100 million and buys treasuries, now instead of being a liability of a bank that can go out of business, it is the liability of the government that cannot go bust. So basically you're decreasing your counterparty risk down to as close to zero as you can get heading into a recession, if not something worse. And this is why the George Soros, Jamie Dimon, and Warren Buffett types always buy long-dated treasuries if they think we are headed for some economic turbulence. So now let's get back to the question as to how he knew so much about the coronavirus in mid-January. And for a lot of you, I'm sure you're thinking, well, that was public information. Well, yes and no. It might have been public information, but the public had no idea of the severity. In fact, not just the general public, as we could tell by that video, the mainstream media had no idea of the severity, nor did markets. In fact, if we look at a chart of the S&P 500, you can see from mid-January to the beginning of March, the markets went straight up. So obviously, Paul Tudor Jones and other financial insiders had access to experts and information, I would call it insider information, although not illegal, that the markets themselves didn't have access to. You see, I think there is a global intel syndicate of this insider information. And using the coronavirus as an example, let's go ahead and think through how this might work. So it starts with a leak, let's say, at a lab in Wuhan. And then these local scientists are going to report that to their local politician. The politician is then going to notify the banks. The banks are going to notify their best clients, which are these financial insiders. And then the best clients are going to seek out the experts that are on the ground to get this debriefing to better understand how they should position their portfolio. And in the case of a pandemic, you're going to want to do one thing, like we discussed on the whiteboard, and that is buy treasuries. You want more proof? Fine. Let's go right over to CNBC and check out an article published January of 2020. Business leaders in Davos privately express concerns about China's coronavirus outbreak. And this was from the same meeting in Davos held by the World Economic Forum. They actually sat down and met with President, at the time Donald Trump, for breakfast to actually warn him about their concerns. Now let's think this through. These business leaders, these financial insiders knew how bad the coronavirus was going to be, but Donald Trump, the president of the United States, had no idea. How can this be? Well, in my opinion, it's because Donald Trump didn't have access to the intel from that scientist in Wuhan, or most likely the Paul Tudor Jones types, the business insiders, the Jamie Dimons of the worlds, had access to that specific scientist and what he was saying about how bad the coronavirus would end up being. So hopefully you're now starting to see how this works. These global elite that are plugged into this intel network of insider information that nobody has access to, they receive this information before anyone else, before the public is even aware of what's going on. And what they do when they see a crisis coming is they'll go ahead and buy treasuries and they'll buy the long end of the curve. And in doing so, it creates more demand, the price goes up and the yield goes down. Actually, before we go any further, let's do a little detective work. Let's go back to 2019 and look at the yield curve, what it was doing, specifically the 10 year minus the three month. So if we look at a timeline, we can see that the yield curve was flattening out. So there were definitely some economic headwinds. But let's focus on July going into August of 2019. This is when the curve really starts to get inverted. 
And the maximum inversion we see at the end of August, where the 10-year treasury was trading around 50 basis points under the three-month treasury. So let's go over that one more time just to make sure that we're all on the same page. The maximum inversion of the curve that we saw in 2019, which basically predicted the pandemic, predicted the recession that we had in 2020, was at the end of August, or the beginning of September. All right, let's shoot over to an article from Yahoo. And this outlines a report from the GOP, the Republicans, that was published in 2021. And this report states that the first super spreader event was likely at the military games in China, October 2019. So if this was the first quote unquote super spreader event, well, then the leak, if that's what happened, had to have occurred prior to October. If we continue to read on, this report says that likely this leak occurred in late August or early September of 2019. And this is the exact same time we had the maximum inversion of the yield curve, which was likely a result of all the global elite and the financial insiders hedging against the high probability that they knew no one else did about a pandemic and buying the long end of the yield curve. But it's not just the global elite and the financial insiders and all the banksters like Jamie Dimon, the politicians as well. In fact, let's go to another story from CNBC. Unsealed FBI documents reveal a flurry of calls and stock trades by Senator Burr in early 2020. Now, to be fair, it wasn't just Senator Burr. It was several politicians. But let's just use his story as a specific example. As chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, <laughs> you think he has access to any insider information? Burr, in February 2020, abruptly liquidated more than half of his and his wife's equity holdings at a time when U.S. markets and most Americans did not yet know how bad the coronavirus pandemic was going to be. Given his position, Burr had information about the virus's spread and about America's meager preparation for a massive pandemic that was not available to the public. So it's not just about what Senator Burr sold, but it's more so about what he bought. On February 12th, Burr ordered the purchase of approximately $1.2 million of Treasury securities using 76% of the total holdings in Burr and his wife's joint account. So why does the yield curve invert? Why is it such a powerful indicator? If you go back to 1950, we can see that almost every single time that curve inverts, we get a recession, if not something worse. Well, it's actually pretty easy. It's a lot like that movie Back to the Future, where Biff takes an almanac, he goes back in time, and he gives it to the young Biff so he knows every single outcome for every single sporting event. And wouldn't you know it, he wins every single time. <laughs> it's the same thing with these politicians, global elite, and financial insiders. Because they're plugged in to this intel network that nobody else has access to, they basically have Biff's almanac. And when Biff's almanac tells them that we're going to have a crisis in the future, they buy treasuries. They buy the long end of the curve, and that's what makes that yield curve invert.